Hello, I'm Gerald, often called Jerry. Uh, the title of my book is As British as the King, Lunenburg County During the First World War. And it has been shortlisted for the Democracy 250 Atlantic Book Award for Historical Writing. Activities on the home front during the war are recounted. Uh, the recruiting of men for the army, uh, women raising funds for various charitable and patriotic organizations and their struggle for the right to vote, uh, bootleggers, politicians, spies, and Lunenburg fishing schooners being sunk by the U-boats, the uh, German submarines. An event early in the war reveals the initial enthusiasm for the war effort, as well as some unintended humor. And that is where I shall be reading. Especially in the early years of the war, patriotic concerts were held around the county to raise funds for various causes. A concert in Lunenburg on November the 11th, 1914, to raise money for the Red Cross, deserves to be covered in some detail because it was typical, if grander than most, uh, but also because of the delightfully entertaining and unrelenting critique offered by the reporter from the Progress Enterprise. Clearly, this reporter was not overly impressed. Held in the crowded opera house, it was alleged that the concert revealed the patriotic spirit of the inhabitants of Lunenburg. The entertainment had been arranged by the teachers of the academy, the local high school. The opening number was Gounod's Soldier's Chorus, rendered by a choir of picked voices and conducted by W.A. Wynott, choir master of the Methodist Church. It would have been faultless if the bass had been heavier, commented the reporter dryly. Arthur Hertel's solo for King and Country was splendid for the occasion, but it did not seem to suit Mr. Hertel, or else the singer was not in good form. Next was a tableau with the subject Home from the War, with Miss Ava Rafus in the role of the mother, reading a letter from her son who came in the door in the person of C.E. Miller to loud applause. A duet for cornet and euphonium followed. The selection was very pleasing, but it would have been better if proper accompaniment had been present. Miss Isabel McGregor's recitation under two flags was decidedly well done and was an appropriate number, but a little more animation would have added considerable to the latter part of the reading, which lends itself admirably to the elocutionist's art. During the intermission, the orchestra played their worst. In fact, in places during the march, they didn't play at all, whether by accident or intent, we know not. Why Mr. Penn Spicer chose the one piece they could not play for such an important place as the interval will remain a mystery. After the intermission came the drill, the Allied Nations. This number was practically perfect, one of the prettiest intricate performances ever offered the Lunenburg Theater going public. But, the reporter remarked, never passing up a chance to damn with faint praise, had the chorus work been attacked with greater surety, it would have ranked as a masterpiece. The drill was followed by an extravaganza called A Sailor's Life, performed by Penn Spicer, the only humorous number in the program, so there was much applause. With his free and easy stage manner, manner Mr. Spicer was always a favorite with a Lunenburg audience. Another tableau followed, and then Mrs. Hobbs, an artiste of the fi first water, received a great reception for her Angus MacDonald. Regrettably, and not surprisingly, the concluding vocal number, a quartet entitled Sweet and Low, was not a success, as the balance was not good, the soprano being overpowered and the pitch kept falling, which cannot be tolerated, tolerated in quartet work with any good result. Britannia was the title of the last tableau with the leading figure supported by men representing the Navy and the Army. 
the colonies and allied nations were grouped about the pedestal at the feet of Britannia, representing Canada, Australia, India, South Africa, Ireland, Scotland, France, Belgium, Japan, and Russia. The sum of $159 for the Red Cross was realized at the door, thanks to the kind patriotic efforts of the academy teachers and their friends. The Canadian Red Cross was one of the most important of the charitable organizations during the war. Every village and hamlet in the county eventually had Red Cross workers who contributed a steady stream of supplies. As early as the first Christmas of the war, the Lunenburg Red Cross was busy preparing boxes of gifts for the town's boys at the front. Many inexpensive trifles, the Bridgewater Bulletin of December the 1st advised, could be sent. Small packages of smokers' articles, candy, shaving and toilet soap, indelible pencils, leather bootlaces, chewing gum, boracic acid, and carbolated Vaseline would be most acceptable. Among the more unusual items the Red Cross dispatched overseas uh, were cholera belts, nightingales, which were a, a shoulder shawl worn in hospitals, housewives, which were portable sewing kits, and court plasters. The New Germany column in the Progress Enterprise of May the 3rd, 1916, reported that many items had been shipped to Red Cross headquarters in Halifax. Mrs. Willie Feindel had knit upwards of 40 pairs of socks since the organization had started there. Mrs. Feindel was surpassed in her efforts, however, by Mrs. Edward Zwicker, an aged lady also from New Germany, who had passed her 79th milestone on life's journey and had done her bit for the boys in the trenches by knitting 210 pairs of socks all forward to, forwarded to them through the proper channels. In the eyes of the all-wise creator and in the hearts of the nation, suggested the bulletin on March the 26th, Mrs. Zwicker should take no second place to Lady Borden and Lady Foster, wives of the Prime Minister and one of his prominent cabinet ministers. According to historians Sarah Glassford and Amy Shaw in a Sisterhood of Suffering and Service, the knitting woman, especially the knitting mother, exemplified associatively approved means of fulfilling a female citizen's wartime obligations and became a powerful and enduring icon of, a, of an engaged home front. On December the 20th, 1916, a rather unkind little poem supposedly written by one of the soldiers on active service, appeared in the Progress Enterprise. Received your socks, lady, some fit. Use one for a hammock, one for a mitt. Like to meet you, lady, when I've done my bit. In the meantime, lady, where in hell did you learn to knit? That's it for now. Best wishes.